Hey, what's up, everyone? My name is Wes. This is Interactive English, which, if this is your first time here on our channel, we are all about trying to help you practice and improve your English skills. And today we're going to do a, a Q&A lesson. It's going to be a Q&A lesson with me, and my name is Wes, and that's me on the far left. That is a picture of my my wife and our baby girl Amelia when we it's about a month ago we traveled to Ljubljana and that's a picture of us in Ljubljana so what we're going to do today is just a, a Q&A lesson all right I like to be able to take some of your questions and interact with you guys directly to you know answer whatever question you may have about grammar pronunciation vocabulary even if it's just a personal question, if you'd like to learn a little bit more about me and my family, feel free to ask those as well. All I would say is try to keep the questions as specific as you can because I'm gonna to try to give a little like shorter answers so I can go through more questions because if somebody asks like, well, go over all 12 verb tenses, we actually did a lesson on that before, if you want to know how <laughs> the 12 different verb tenses, it's a lot to get into. So try to keep the question specific so that uh, I will give, uh, you know, as, as quickly a uh, response as quickly as possible um, and answer your question. So I want to give some shout outs because you guys are here with me in the chat. So give a shout out to, hey, um, Romesa, Lydia, Lolly, Dublin, um, Iman, Atavistic, Pachu, uh, Onesim, uh, Nogavadra, Nogavadra, oh, all right, so I'm, I'm sorry, I apologize if I mispronounced some names, but I want to try and get in as many uh, questions as I can, as well as recognize all of you guys who are here with me in the chat. Um, so, well, let's just take the, the first question from uh, Amelia, excellent. That is our daughter's name. That is a gorgeous name, excellent. Uh, and she asked, could you give some advice for getting a TESOL certificate? So for those of you who don't know, um, TESOL stands for Teaching English to Speakers of Other Languages. So if you would like to get a job teaching English, uh, maybe in your country or in another country, uh, a school might ask for a certificate. They might ask for a TESOL certificate, or an ESL certificate, which is English as a second language, uh, in order to show that you have done some training, that you have done some, some work to be qualified to be a teacher. And what I would say is there are many programs out there to choose from. There are There is a wide variety. If you are somebody, and we hear from teachers all the time, who are thinking, oh, I would like to teach English, what should I do? It, it's hard to say because each country is a little different and each each person is a little different, whether you want to teach kids or whether you want to teach adults. So what I would say is think about like what, what goals do you want to achieve? Do you want to teach in your country? Do you want to teach in other countries? Do you want to teach children? Do you want to teach adults? Do you want to work at public schools or uh, after school academies? And then you can start to figure out, okay, what requirements must I meet in order to get this job or position. I think that there are many online TESOL certificates that you can go through. These programs are often cheaper. What I personally think, I think the best programs are the ones that you would actually have to go to class. And you would go there and you would do maybe, it could be a two week course, and when you finish, you get a TESOL certificate or maybe one month. And I would also say to try and find a course that has a practicum. And when I say that the course has a practicum, it means that part of it is actually practicing teaching and you are getting up there in front of class and you are having to actually teach. So a practicum course would, would be very beneficial if you're looking to get a TESOL certificate. So hopefully, Amelia, that helped answer your question a little bit. Um, so Pachu asked, sir, what's the difference between uh, loose and lose? So these are two words, loose and lose um, are commonly confused. They are different parts of speech. So loose, L-O-O-S-E, that is a, an adjective. And you could say that something is loose, that it's the opposite of tight. It's not tight, it's loose. For example, maybe you would say, well, my pants are a little loose. And if your pants are loose, they may fall down. <laughs> they're, they're not tight. They're loose, L-O-O-S-E. If you're talking about lose, to lose something, 
would be like you, you do not win, the opposite of win. The opposite of win is lose, L-O-S-E. That is the verb, to lose a, a football match, to lose the competition. So again, those are commonly confused because the spelling is similar. It's only one O that's different. And I think a lot of native speakers uh, can confuse these a little bit as well. Um, loose and lose. We did a story, uh, a lesson a while back about commonly confused words. Maybe check that out. Um, so what else do we have? Um, <laughs> oh wait, there's going fast. Uh, so it says, Ro Roger asks, how much it costs to study in America if you are Spanish? Um, that's a good question. If you're talking about if you want to study in the United States, if you're talking about studying English, I used to work at an intensive English program and it was about for everything, for just the program, it was a little over $1,000 for the month for just the instruction. And that, that entailed about 30 hours of instruction each week if it's an intensive English program. So I would budget about $1,000 a month, but then you have to pay for living, uh, for food and all these other things. So it can be quite ex expensive depending on where you wanna live. And I'd also say that uh, if you're talking about studying like university, then it would be even much more expensive because university classes uh, cost a lot more money. So it depends on what, what you really want to study. Um, I wanted to give a quick say, so I know a lot of you are, are tuning in and checking out this Q&A. This is a great time to ask questions. If I don't get to your questions, please write them in the comments once the lesson is posted and we will try, we always try to answer everybody's question and we do the best that we can. Or sometimes this is, it gives us great ideas for future lessons if we wanna do a video and say, oh, this is a great topic. Um, so let's just go, somebody else, uh, Deanna asked, what does it mean if something is baggy? Um, Speaking of loose, <laughs> baggy means that something is a little loose. And if you're talking about, um, maybe not just a little loose, it's often talking about like the like pants, baggy jeans or baggy pants, which they're very, uh, they look big on you. And you could say that there's a lot of room and they look baggy. And it almost looks like they're pretty loose and they might fall down, that they're too big. You could say it looks baggy. It's often talking about jeans or trousers or pants, that they look baggy. Um, let's see, Saeed says, is it cor correct grammar structure? You're disappeared by tomorrow. This is a song from Biggie Small. Um, I, if you're talking about grammar, it makes me think of like, again, more rule-based, you're talking about writing, in which case, no. Um, you wouldn't say you are disappeared, you'd say you have disappeared. But if you're saying um, you by tomorrow, it's talking about the future tense. So you'd say you will disappear by tomorrow. Or if you're conforming it, constructing it like, um, using it with another point in time, you will have disappeared by tomorrow, all right? This will have happened. Often, I think when you're talking about music, people break grammar rules all the time, and this is what happens uh, quite frequently in spoken English, and I think in many languages as well. When people are speaking casually, informally, they may tend to break uh, grammar rules, but no, that is not <clears throat> the correct grammar structure right there. Um, let's see, why do we use uh, all day? So Onisam says, sir, why do we use the definite article the in the proverb, an apple a day keeps the doctor away? Should we not omit the article as it implies a general thing? You're talking about doctor. I think in this case, you're uh, just identifying I know the is referring to something specific, like we know the doctor, but in this case, it's more so identifying the profession, a specific perfection. We're talking about the doctor. We're not talking about the police. We're not talking about some other profession. So I think and that's why in the proverb, it's identifying the specific profession that an apple a day will keep the doctor away. This profession, because 
You eat an apple, it means you're healthy. You're going to feel well, you're not gonna get sick, so you will not need to go see the doctor. Even though, yes, I understand what you mean that the is an article we use with specific things. But in that case, I believe the proverb would talk about the profession. Um, Romaisa says, what uh, what that mean? Cheerful, please. So cheerful, uh, I, cheerful is a word like full, um, the, the suffix is full, full of something. It's like full of cheer. So if somebody is full of cheer, then they are very happy. Cheerful means very happy, very excited, very smiley. Right now, I am cheerful to be hanging out with all of you guys in this uh, Q&A. Uh, let's see. Uh, what else do we have? Is, oh gosh, atavistic is sesquipedal. Delianist, a word? Honestly, I have no idea. That is, that is a good question. You, you could try to Google that word. Often, if you guys have words, vocabulary words, that you don't know the meaning, I always think Google and search engines, it's a great resource. Just throw the word in there and follow it with the word meaning. So write the word and write meaning, M-E-A-N-I-N-G, and see what comes up. Oftentimes, it'll give you uh, the dictionary results as well as perhaps a pronunciation of the word. So uh, I, I have no idea if that's a word. It's not a word that I use uh, in, in conversation. So I don't think I, I wouldn't worry about trying to memorize that unless it's for your job, if that's a word that's important to you. Um, let's see, where is it? Um, who else do we have? What do you think about learning from Leila? That's a good question. What do you think about learning from TV shows. Honestly, I think that TV shows, it, it is a great way to get exposure to the language. One of the things that, that we constantly tell learners again and again and again, because they say, you know, how can I improve my fluency? How can I improve this skill? And I think no matter which skill you're talking about, the more exposure you get to the language, the more you're surrounded by English, the better you are, the better off you are trying to improve your speaking, your listening, your reading, your grammar. And watching TV, it is a great way to get exposure to the language and you are learning passively. That means that you're, it's passive learning that you're just watching it for your own entertainment. You don't have to do any kind of action. I, you know, I, I think it's good to get a mix of both. When we do our lessons, we try, even though they're recorded, these are videos, we try to make them active. Often we do these lessons and we'll do like a quiz lesson. And I want you guys to write your answer in the chat or write your answer in the comments. That is more active learning. But if you're just watching a TV show or movie, you don't have to do any sort of action. So it's passive learning. And again, that's a good way to just get exposure to the language and also watch something you're interested in. So what I would recommend for TV is first watch something you're interested in and then try to find something that, you know, if you can bring it down to your level a little bit, because especially when it comes to like YouTube videos, so many people will tell me, oh, you speak too fast. And then others will tell me, oh, you speak way too slow. On YouTube, it allows you to change the speed of speech. So if I, usually when somebody says, well, you speak too fast, then I'm like, well, you can slow it down if you want. And other people are like, oh, you speak too slow. It's like, well, if you want to, you can speed it up if you want to listen at your level. So same with TV. Sometimes it's not always possible with TV shows to slow down the speech, but with YouTube, it is very possible to really try to listen at your level. I think that is great. Um, what, let's see, Ira said one question, how to sound good in English? Um, I mean, is it like as an English teacher? Uh, I'm not sure like how to like sound like you're, I, I don't know if you're talking about sounding professional or actually your pronunciation to actually sound more like a native speaker and reduce your accent. Um, if that's the case to sound like um, more of a native speaker and you want to reduce your accent or pronunciation, there are many, many different videos out there to try to help people reduce their accent. Cause I know some people have a stronger accent. And I think if, before you even begin doing that, it's great to identify 
what challenges you have in pronunciation. Are there certain letters that you have difficulty pronouncing? And then focus on that. Is it something with intonation or emphasis? And then try to focus on that. If you're talking about like sounding good, like knowledgeable, then again, I think the, the best thing to do is just to keep learning and keep practicing. I know it sounds silly and it's the same thing I tell you guys, but it, even me, I learn something new about English just about every day. Um, somebody had asked about that word earlier. I'm pro I forget what the word is. I'm probably going to go look it up after the lesson so I can see if it's a word and, uh, you know, under know what it means. Because you're, I think when it comes to language, you can always learn something new. And I think that is one of the great things about learning a language, no matter whether it's English or any language, you can constantly learn something about grammar, uh, vocabulary, anything. Um, so something else, uh, Hello, Hong. Do you like Taylor Swift songs? Uh, yeah, some of them I think are, I don't really often, I, I don't listen to much music because I, I work at home. I don't spend much time in the car. Sometimes when I'm out exercising, I'll listen to music, but lately I haven't been listening to a lot, but yeah, Taylor Swift songs, I, I think they're catchy. And if I say something is catchy, if you're not familiar with that, it kind of means that it, it, it sticks in your brain, that you hear it and you're like, ah, oh, I like the sound of that. It's catchy. Um, let's see. What is your opinion about the to Edouard asked, what's your opinion about the TOEFL text? Like, um, TOEFL is again, if you guys don't know, there are two, uh, well teaching, I'm trying to think, um, I'm trying to think TESOL, TOEFL, it's talking about, it's, it's an exam that is given to test your proficiency in English, uh, for IELTS is another big one. Um, the, the TOEFL test is another one. And I don't know if you're saying text, like you're referring to this type of exam in terms of proficiency. I always think when it comes to IELTS and, and TOEFL, I understand why they exist, that you need to measure somebody's proficiency if you're talking about giving a person uh, a job or an opportunity to go to school. You wanna make sure that this person can function. Personally, I don't think that those are the best metrics for understanding proficiency because when it comes to language learning, there's a lot of things that you can't measure. For example, uh, you know, confidence. When it comes to somebody's ability to say, yes, I am confident to speak in front of other people or starting a conversation and practicing my speaking skills, a test really can't measure uh, that sort of thing. So it, it really depends on what your goals are, I would say. If your goals are trying to go to university or get a job, then I, I understand why you might be want to take it and why it's important to you. Um, so, oh, Yusef, <laughs> someone's adding, where is it? Um, I thought I saw, it said I had a TOEFL test next week. Uh, if you are going to take the TOEFL or IELTS, all I would say is if you're, uh, obviously you're trying to maximize your score, definitely take several practice exams and you can find those online for free. Uh, practice exams for TOEFL and IELTS. Try to identify where your weakness is because they're going to test you on the four major language skills of speaking, um, reading, writing, and listening. And if you can identify your weakness, then that's what you should try to focus on in order to maximize your score and try to uh, get the best score possible. Um, let's see. Um, uh, RC, what do you think of Britain's Brexit? Well, that's just kind of a, <laughs> an opinion question. Uh, I, it's, it'll be interesting to see what happens. I know the, the, the deadline is coming soon. I believe it's October 31st and they're trying to renegotiate. Um, for me, I think it's a little interesting because right now my wife and I, we live in Europe. So we're, it's going to be, you know, we'll see how this affects the world economy, but I know it will have a big impact on the European economy. Personally, I, I'm not something, I don't think that you know, it's a good thing. Uh, I, I, as somebody who has traveled um, to many places around the world and has lived in different countries, I am much more a person who likes the integration of 
our countries and our cultures and people because I've been on the other end where I'm living in another country and I want people to be uh, welcoming. I want them to be friendly. I want them to help me out if I need it. So I personally think it's great when there's more integration and I feel like Brexit is more so just like, look, we, we want to be on our own. We want to separate. Um, and yeah, I'm not really uh, a big part. I'm uh, <laughs> not really a huge believer in that. So let's see. Um, what else do we got? Uh, Samuel says, hi, I'm from Egypt. Give us lesson about up usages. Oh, wow. Um, wow, that, that would be maybe a good one for the future uh, in talking about a full lesson with different ways to use up because there's so many. I think the most common one, if you're talking about the direction, like something is up, it's above you. But there are many phrases. I always say at the beginning of our lessons, what's up? And that's just an expression to say a very informal, casual way of saying hello. Up is also a preposition used with many, many different phrasal verbs, like you can back up a car. And if you back up the car, it means you're going in reverse. You can also talk someone up. And if you're talking a person up, then in that case, it means that you are saying a lot of great things about this person. So up has many, many, many uses, usages, and that might be a good one in the future to do like a deep dive into that and find out uh, to really show you how it's used. Last week, um, I believe we did, I did a lesson on like and how and when to use the word like because there are seven different parts of speech in which you can use this one word. And I think it, it's more of a grammar lesson, but always entertaining. Um, Pavel says, with love from Siberia. Thank you. Thank you very much. Wow, Siberia. Awesome. Very cool. Um, let's see. Oh, good morning. I'm Henry from Vietnam. What's up, Henry? Thanks for uh, <laughs> joining us. And uh, language in the real world. Hi, can you introduce yourself to your baby? Yes. So we will have our little baby girl, uh, Amelia. You may hear her maybe in the background. She's in the kitchen right now. But we're, we're going to try and get her a little more involved, especially when she's a baby. To be honest, as she gets older, we're, we're not going to have her out in many pictures or in front of the camera because again, she's as she gets older, we want her to have her private life. Um, but as she's a baby, we will try to incorporate her a little bit more um, into the into some of the lessons. Juan Carlos uh, asked, what book would you recommend? So that is a great question. And what I would say to that is again, so many people ask us about reading like, oh, what book do you think? I would tell you two things, very simple things read something that you're interested in because if you're not interested in the topic then you're not it's not likely that you're going to finish the story or finish the book and and in that case you're reading it just because somebody told you to so i could tell you a book that i like but you may not be interested in it maybe i tell you a book about travel um i actually like reading uh, nonfiction books, like history books. But if, if that's not for you, then definitely don't read those books. Read something you're interested in and then read at your level. I think one challenge when it comes to reading is that people will find a book and they'll say, oh, you know, I am going to read um, this book, this very famous book, uh, Tolstoy or whatever. And the book is just so much higher than their level. And even though it's a story they may be familiar with, the, the reading level is not there. The biggest favor that you can do yourself is to read at your level, and I would actually say slightly above your level, because if you read it slightly above your level, then that means that you'll be able to understand the story without running to a dictionary every minute or two to look up a word, and you'll also, if you don't know the words, you'll be able to put them in context because you understand the rest of the paragraph, the rest of the story. So read a little bit above your level. When I was learning Spanish, I started out reading children's books. I was reading like Dr. Seuss in Spanish. And as I improved and got to an intermediate level, I began reading these adventure stories, which were still for kids. In Spanish, they were... They were probably for kids from anywhere ages 10 to 14, but they were a little more entertaining because they weren't just basic, simple sentences, but it was more at my level and I could read it uh, quicker. And again, it, it just benefited my language because I was able to learn so many new words. If you read it uh, way above your level, it's just going to be frustrating. Um, 
so let's see who else do we see we said uh yoha young hello from korea Annyeonghaseyo. to anybody out there from korea uh which is korean from hello i used to live in korea i lived and taught there for three years um which uh africa which kind of grammar book do you recommend i like um grammar in use i think is a good book uh i think grammar in use is a great book for self-study if you're trying to learn on your own it does a great job of explaining it, and then there are many different activities. As far as teaching is concerned, if I'm if you're a teacher and in a classroom, I like the Azar books, Betty Azar. Uh, those grammar books I think are great for instruction because they really lay it out in a way that it it really makes sense, and they build on top of each other. So you have one grammar topic. And then there are certain activities that will build on top of each other and they become a little more increasingly difficult. So as a teacher, Azar books, as a learner on your own, grammar and use. <laughs> All right, English grammar and use. Um, JL Reyes, what does aqualung mean? Um, honestly, I don't know. I haven't, I, I haven't really heard this word aqualung. And unless it refers, I'm just guessing, because aqua is talking about like something in the water, your lungs, maybe somebody who is able to hold their breath for a long time. I don't know. Aqualung. I'm not sure. That would be another one. <laughs> Just Google aqualung and meaning and see, see what you come up with. Um, so I'd say little by little says how to use the perfect tenses in real life. Uh, definitely before we did this, uh, about verb tenses. We, I talked about all 12 verb tenses. Please check out that lesson. I'm gonna go ahead and throw that into the chat in case you're interested in it. So many people ask about verb tenses. But the one verb tense that is so important is the present perfect, okay? Make sure you learn the present perfect and know how to use it because again, when you're talking about the perfect verb tenses, um, especially like the present perfect, it is talking about the past. And it is very common in English because people will use it, especially when asking questions. And they'll say like, oh, have you been to this place? Um, have you seen this movie? And they just use it in conversation when they're, they're telling a story or they're, again, having a casual conversation with somebody like, oh, yes, I have been to Japan. Um, and then you would switch and say, I was there 10 years ago. So in that case, I switched from the present perfect to the simple past. I gave you an unspecified time. I've been to Japan. I was there 10 years ago. I switched to the past because I gave a specific time. But let me throw this in the chat. It is a very nice, long, comprehensive lesson on all 12 verb tenses. If you haven't seen it yet, please go check that out. Uh, let's see, I will throw a link here in the chat. Okay, boom, there you go. Um, Let's see, what else we got? Hello, Prana from India. Hello, how are you? Welcome, thank you. Um, and Dwithu says, hey Wes, because I'm imitating your pronunciation in the here and now. Excellent. When, when you are imitating, again, another way of doing that, it's just talking about shadowing. Another way to say that. Shadowing is a pronunciation uh, technique. It actually is a great way to improve your speaking skills as well, is that when somebody is talking, you are saying the you are saying the same words immediately after them almost to the point where you're saying it at the exact same time uh, one way to think about this is like music when you're listening to music if you're singing along with the song that is an example of shadowing you're trying to shadow the the words the emphasis, the intonation. And again, it is a great way to practice all of those skills, to practice your pronunciation, but also practice your speaking because you're having to talk. Uh, let's see. Um, well, let's see, Steve, Steve Eska Scudder says, hi, could you please explain um, right learning of the idiom one time down the road? Hmm, Jan from, actually, I'm trying to think, one time down the road. That is an idiom that I'm not too familiar with. Um, and as far as like the context, uh, one time down the road. So I, I would say that there's a phrase, if somebody says um, down the road, like something is down the road, it just means it's further on down the road. Like, oh, where is the store? Yeah, it's on down the road. In that case, it's just you have to go further to get there. 
one time down the road, if that's the idiom, I'm not sure. Uh, I'd have to see what uh, what kind of context it's being used in. So I'm not too familiar with, with that. Uh, let's see. Um, some other questions. Uh, I'm trying to think. Um, what are the different ways to use wood? Oh, okay, Lolly, that is a great question. And I think that's another one. Th this is giving me a lot of great ideas um, because I think that's another one because the word has, uh, has many different uses that we could do a full lesson on the different uses of this word, when they're used, how it's used. I think I used it um, last week when I was talking about the differences of like, and it's used as a modal, I would like. And in that case, it's just a polite way of saying you want something, I would like. So I, I'm gonna add that to the list, that is a good one. Um, Ladon asks, please say, so far. Okay, so if somebody says so far, it just means up until this point. Okay, so for example, if we're talking about this point now, I'd say, you know, so far I have been answering your questions um, about English, all right? And I use that in the present perfect continuous because it started in the past, it's continued up until now, and will likely continue for a little bit in the future. So I'd say so far I've been answering your questions on English grammar. Um, so usually when you're trying to find out some information and, you know, saying, hey, you know, has it been this way for very long? Is this situation, when did it, uh, and you could say, yeah, so far, um, you know, this is the way it is. For, I'm trying to think of another example, maybe with uh, the weather or something, so far. Uh, let's see, Mohammed says, your guess was right. Uh, <laughs> Aqualung means a tool that allows divers to breathe for a long period of time underwater through feeding, oh, okay. So in that case, it's talking about uh, scuba diving. Um, scuba diving, aqualung, excellent. That makes that makes perfect sense. Uh, all right, so I like it how, I, one thing I do wanna say, I wanna thank all of you guys because I see some of you, if I'm not able to answer the question, you guys are helping to answer those questions and I would encourage you to do that because I can't see all of them and that is a great way for you to, again, practice what you already know because if somebody's asking a question and you know the answer, write the answer down uh, in the chat so that that person you know, know what, knows what it means, but it's a great way for you to try to explain it to somebody else. Perfect. Um, <laughs> Velawant says, please speak in Hindi. I'm sorry, I don't, I don't speak. I don't speak Hindi. Perhaps one day I, I would love to learn. Uh, we, we'll, we'll see. Again, there's many, there's several languages on my list. Right now, uh, the first language I learned was Spanish. And then when I lived in Korea for a few years, I was studying Korean. And my Korean, Nanun, Jonun, Hangugoro, Chongmal Heo, Wenyang, Hamyang, Hangugoro, Chongmal, Areawayo. She, uh, I don't know. I don't know. Probably if you're Korean, you're like, oh, that is such terrible, <laughs> such a thick accent. But hopefully you understand. All I was saying is that I studied Korean. It's a very difficult language. And I thought English is much easier to learn. All right. Um, so, uh, and I'm also right now I'm learning Romanian. That is my, the next language that, that I'm trying to learn is Romanian. So let's see, I, I do wanna get, let you guys know, if you guys want to connect with us, all right? If you want to connect with us closer, find out more information about who we are and what we're doing, get lesson updates, we'll give you access to the secret fluency lesson. And again, it's, it's just another way to find out what's going to happen in the future because we have a lot of, we have a lot of plans for the future, especially 2020. Join our email list. There is a link, I just put it in the chat, boom. There's also a link down below in the description. It's another great way to connect with us. And again, you can write to us, practice your writing skills. We try to respond to as many people as we can. Um, so, Dwitha, you look more handsome in a black shirt. Thank you. I, I appreciate that. Uh, this is, uh, it's a little warm out today, so uh, it's kind of a, a, <laughs> a buttoned up t-shirt. So, um, Mombok, I don't know what you did say in Korean, but it sounds very impressive. Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate that. Um, 
You're surely bring your daughter on the camera. We uh, next time. All right. Next time I'll, I'll try to have Amelia make a cameo. All right. That's a good phrase to know. And if you say somebody makes a cameo, it means that they make an appearance on video or maybe they make an appearance on the TV show or a movie. So for example, you could say that some person, an actor, has a cameo on this show. They have a very small part where they make an appearance. So I'll try to have her make a cameo, all right? Um, somebody asks, I can't say your name, how old are you? All right, now, but let me put the question to you guys. How old do you think I am? I think I have, I have said this in the past. I have given you uh, this information before. You may have forgotten, you may have not seen one of those lessons, but write it, let me know in the chat. Well, how old do you guys think I am? And then I will tell us, uh, I will tell you uh, my age. Also, I just want to say if you guys, if you do, if you enjoy what we do um, and you, you want to support interactive English and what we do, you can make a small contribution. There are some cool rewards. Check out our Patreon page. I just put a link in the description right there. there. We have some cool rewards that we offer people for their monthly contributions if you want to support our channel and what we do. All right, so getting some, all right. Uh, Elizabeth says 35, Ladan says 48, 48, oh, okay. Onisem 41, Chris 40, Kathy 42, <laughs> perhaps 40, Saeed 42, wow, okay, MJ 30. I'm uh, Romasa 39. I'm actually very impressed. You guys are very, very close. Everybody's close. Um, I, I'm 40. Um, so this year I am going to turn 41. I will turn 41 in about, gosh, three weeks. My birthday is November 12th. So uh, in three weeks, uh, November 12th, I am going to turn 41. I was born 1978. So many of you were close. Somebody said 18. <laughs> Thank you, I guess. I really appreciate that. Um, but most of you, yes, late 30s, early 40s, very close, uh, close enough. Uh, all right, so again, I, I wanted to just take this time to answer some of your questions. I think having these, we do this about each month. I try and do a monthly Q&A to connect with you guys, answer your questions, as well as get ideas for the future. And I hope you enjoy doing these Q&As. It's great listening practice, uh, as well as probably having some of your questions answered about English that you may have wanted to know. So, Thank you guys for joining me today. I really appreciate uh, you guys being here. Uh, Natalia, happy birthday in advance. Thank you so much. <laughs> I appreciate that. Uh, I, I hope if you have other questions, please write those to us in the comments once the, the video gets posted. And again, this is a great way for us to find out, okay, what are you guys looking to learn so that we know which lessons we should do in the future. Thank you guys so much for joining me. I hope that you guys have a wonderful, wonderful day and I will see you next time. So long.